This tire has some problems. I just halfway removed this rubber by using two screwdrivers, a larger one. That valve had to be pushed in a little bit with something and I can remove it. Let's see, even with one hand. The motor is not yet disconnected, but the inner tube is already visible. Let's push in the valve somehow. The valve does not want to enter. Is there some air in it? Nothing. On the other side, seems to be in contact with this outer part. Let's try to remove the wheel. That's not easy either. That's 19 and it's quite large. So I don't have 18. It's going to deform it. I also have this impact wrench. But the problem is that this is 19 and I need 18. It's working. So the 19 millimeter is kind of okay. By the way, the other side of this valve is clearly in contact with the other side of this one. Now turn it around. Brakes are attached. So that works fine. Impact wrench, 5 amp hour Makita brushless. By the way, this has to be for impact also. They are black and they are stronger, I think. And the wheel should come off, theoretically. Yes, there is an electric wire. That's the problem. Yes, the valve is in contact with the other side. So on the brake side, there is this one, they don't rotate and the brakes are disconnected from the disc. Those are there. I pulled off the rubber but unfortunately into the wrong side. <laughs> so don't pull it towards the cable but pull it outside where there is nothing on this shaft. 8.1 slash 2 by 2 minus 156A. So here's a possible problem. I should put some glue on that one, rubber based glue. And maybe there's no need to remove the entire wheel. Now it's inflated a little bit. But where was that hole? Here's a problem. That one. So push the valve in to release the air. Adhesive tip prenandes, rubber based glue. It's almost fluid. Screwdriver. And let it dry a few hours or maybe a day. Took this bit four sides and six sides, it's a solid metal, put it onto the screw and hit it with the hammer and now push it down and rotate it. Now look, <laughs> now I can barely remove it since I hammered it in a little bit, so I put it back and hit it on the side. Of course the hole is full of WD-40. The top is a bit deformed. Do not use a tool like this, an impact wrench. <laughs> it has a way too much force for these tiny screws. It only deforms them, so don't do it. Let's see this one. WD-40, put a bit on it and hammer it and then remove it. That's a good way to remove screws. Will this come out? Of course the wire is holding it. And it's rotating. 
it will not come off totally because the wire is there but you can access the plastic and this is that guilty plastic it was in this position the cut is on the outside of the wheel something like this come on focus now put more WD-40 on the wheel itself on the rubber to make it slippery and pull it to the other side towards the brakes don't oil the brakes push in one side and try to remove the other the brake is in the way plus it's slippery and look it comes off that WD-40 is very important it's highly slippery since it's very slippery it comes off and since the plastic is missing I can tilt that valve and it comes out if that plastic is in place then the valve enters into the other side if the plastic is removed then that valve can be tilted and thus it can come out now let's pump some air in it and verify it underwater especially here not good highly leaking this method is not too good you cannot see it very clearly there is some leaking
now the brakes are continuously rubbing the disc this is loose right now from these two if you pull the brake then the other side is always in contact so put some paper between the disc and the other side so under somehow insert it and then pull the brake lever to create a distance between the brake pad and the disc on the other side when you release the brake lever now pull it and now tighten the screws just a small amount remove the paper and power on the scooter and pull the acceleration and it's still in friction and it's moving also other side is in friction here is in friction in other parts is not in friction so here let's insert there a paper Now pull it and tighten it. Remove the paper and there is still some friction. Slightly less. So the brake pad is in contact with the brake disc and this screw on the side is loosened and the other one. So this portion can move up and down. The disc pad which is on the bottom, on the other side, that is fixed and only this one which is on the top, that is being pushed down when you pull the brake lever. Finally, it's not rubbing, it's just vibrating. If you take a look between the rubber and the metal rim, there is a line on the rubber. That line is getting further away and closer to the rim. <laughs> For example, here it's further away there is closer it's hard to make it perfect when you pump air into the tire then that is not distributing evenly that distance and thus your wheel is vibrating and at high speeds that will be highly noticeable above let's say 30 kilometers per hour 40-50 The glue holds okay.